to focus our evening on where God is leading us. Christmas Day, we've been advertising, so you are aware Christmas Day, or Christmas Eve Day, I should say, is on a Sunday this year. And it presents a unique opportunity for us to worship together, both in the morning and in the evening. So take a look at the worship times for the morning and the worship time for Christmas Eve service in the evening. Lastly, if that wasn't enough, I just want to make sure that we take a moment to thank our proclamation team, and especially Mary Ellen and, uh, and Nick, for putting together this gorgeous altarpiece up here. Can I just get an amen for that? Amen. We have so many talented leaders in our church, but I think it is important that we celebrate when God is working through them and we get to partake in the blessings of God. With that said, Thinking about the blessings of God and the people served today, we want to take a moment to recognize our veterans amongst us. And if you are a veteran who served, or a family member of a veteran who served, why we just ask you in this moment to take, to, to take a moment to stand up. For those that supported somebody who served, we want to thank you for the time that you supported them and continue to support them in these days. With that said, will you stand and join us in the call to worship? <laughs> Good morning. I'm Judy Davis, and I am your worship leader this morning. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay? Good. Uh, before we do anything, I would just like to say it's so nice to see some your faces back with us this morning. Harry, Ch uh, Chuck is visiting, Kevin is here, no, there might be a couple others that I missed that may have come in after I did, but just happy to have you back with us today. It's wonderful to see you here. Okay, our call to worship this morning. We gather to celebrate and joyfully sing to our God together, and let us share our praises and thankfulness. Come, oh, let us enter You, O oh God, are the holy God always and forever. In you, by you, and through you, all good things come. All that we have, all that we are, is shaped by your hand of mercy. Come, let us enter into the sacred Oh God, we are your children, created by and with your love. Come, let us enter into Our hymn this morning is for the fruits of this creation, page 97 in our United Methodist Hymnal.
we come together in community, we come to support one another in our times of need, to shout out the joys that we have in our lives and the ways that we have been affected by God's mercy and grace. First, I want to just, I said that at the beginning, take a look at your bulletin inserts and take a look at those lists of people that have been connected to this church who have served in the armed force or served in the past. And throughout this week, be in prayer for their families, be in prayer for them as individuals as we go throughout the week. What things can we lift up as prayers of joy, as prayers of frustration? After five years, my son finally got engaged and is going to be married. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, so you, you said, say a little my louder. My son Kelly got engaged Friday night. Oh, oh wonderful. Friday. Your son got engaged, and so this is a fantastic thing. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. What other things can we lift up? Bill Keck has a birthday, I think. <laughs> Okay, Bill Keck, happy birthday to you. Okay, how fast are you trying? All right. Mary also has a birthday. Mary, happy birthday to you too. Mary. Today. Today. That is awesome. Are you also trying to catch up? Yes. <laughs> So Kevin, you are. So Kevin is lifting up a friend by the name of Wayne, who's going in for a surgery for a biopsy this week uh, for a tumor that's uh, near his throat. And so we want to be lifting up Wayne in our prayers. And then finally, uh, uh, former um, members of ours that I've got to know, uh, as you were helping me raise Makayla here, is uh, Larry Deanne Wilson. Uh, they live at the, the lodge uh, across the street uh, from Crestview, where I live. And uh, just keep Larry and Deanne in some special prayers as uh, they have, have had different health issues over the years. And uh, the go-to person is, of course, uh, Deanne and Larry's 
daughter that's really helping out to give Deanne to different appointments. But uh, keep, keep both of them uh, in, in your prayers. Thank you. So Kevin is also lifting up Larry and Deanne Wilson, especially Larry, these days. And so be keeping them in your prayers. If you remember, Larry and Deanne Wilson were connected to, have been connected to this church for many, many years. And so let's keep them in our prayers. Anything else that we need to lift up today? Yeah, I'm just grateful. The government finally uh, found out that I service connected 100%. It took me 55 years. Say that one more time. I get a pension now. Okay. Oh, government service connected. It took them 55 years to. Well, that is something to celebrate. For me, a little bit. Yeah. That's right. So it took 55 years for you to prove that you, you were deserved a pension. And so, yes, sorry to hear that. So we need to be in prayer for you and uh, just prayers of thanksgiving that you have been allotted the pension that you deserved after 55 years. Thank you. What other things can we lift out? Blanche? So we want to be in prayer for Blanche's friend who's in California. What's that? Tom. Tom. For Tom who's in California, we want to be in prayer in this time of need. What other things do we have to lift up? And I would just like to express my joy and appreciation for being able to once again uh, attend the you here. So for those that are online, we are just thankful for Harry to be able to be with us in worship today. And we also want to pray for Madeline in, in her recovery. Yes. I want to give thanks to Harry for all that he's done for us. Amen. He's so good. Thank you, Bert. Thank you very much for the many people that have guests. Thank you for joining us in worship today. This is a pleasure to have these. What a great company and cloud of witnesses that joined together today as we think about what it means to celebrate the community, but also God's presence in and through it. I ask if you would to take a moment in an attitude of prayer with me. God of all that is, all that was, and all that is to come. We want to follow you wherever you lead us. Reach out to us this day in worship, stirring our souls and spirits with the winds of your power, that we may fully and faithfully be your disciples. Let our hearts be focused on your generous spirit and be called into your beautiful design. Today we pray for many things. We pray for engagements. We pray for the joy of friends and longtime members being with us. We pray for the celebration of birthdays and the many years of your blessing that Bill and Mary have experienced. We pray for guests with us. We pray for people who we are connected to that go beyond guests to family and friends who are part of this community. We pray for those that are in need both here and afar. 
We pray for those that are going through health challenges and transitions. We pray for those that have had been given a diagnosis that's other than what they would want, and they're wondering what this means for their lives now. We pray for those among us who are reaching out to friends and saying, you're not alone. God, we pray for people after many years of trying and searching who now have pensions and support. God, we pray for those among us who are concerned over the years of war, over the places of turmoil, and have wondered for years where peace can be seen in our land. We pray for the homeless, those without a bed, or those without a place, and as the weather gets colder and colder, we ask you, Lord, show us what it means to nurture and support them. We pray, knowing that you stand beside us in worship together, that we are not alone, and that your Holy Spirit beckons us into this sense of generosity as a response to the blessings that you have given us. Let us ask for your guidance in prayer through your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like the children to come forward. If there are some kiddos here today that don't mind coming up front with me, I would appreciate it. Or young and hard, I don't care. <laughs> okay, this morning I'm going to be talking and sharing with you a little bit about a story that the pastor's going to elaborate for you folks out here about the loaves and fishes. Only today we're going to talk about a young boy who was responsible for some of that. So, we'll start back. Well, I think we'd like to call him Ben. I think Ben's a good name. And he would be about the age of, you know, I had Michael, I think, 12, 13 years old, 14. Anyway, that morning they all got up and but Dad decided that they were going to hear this guy, Jesus, talk, have a, give a speech. They had been hearing a lot about it. So Mom was scurrying around. She's busy trying to put a sack full of lunch for the, for the children, for Dad and, and Ben. And uh, she put in two fish. They're little fish, not very big fish, and five loaves. Not loaves like we go to high fee and buy, but little, small, little pieces of bread. We'll talk a little bit later. Anyway, they got their lunch, took off, and went to the hillside where they know Jesus was. And oh my gosh, they got there, and there were tons of people there. Scripture tells us there were at least 5,000 men. And we know there had to be children and women girls there too. So there were probably 10 to 12,000 people listening to Jesus. So Ben and his dad got lucky. They found a spot up near where Jesus was. So they go up and sit down and listen to this man share. And it was beautiful and wonderful. And they were so <coughs> taken by the wonderful things he said. And they had heard about it. He was a healer as well. So as the day went on, and they are getting a little bit hungry, so um, uh, then here's the disciples and Jesus having a little discussion. Something wasn't going on quite right here, apparently. And one of them was saying, well, what are we going to do? We've got all these people. They're getting hungry. It's getting late in the day. We've got to do something about it. So Jesus says, feed them. Feed them, of course. So that, well, we can't feed them. We don't have enough money to feed 12,000 people, for heaven's sakes. So Jesus, so our little man, standing nearby, and he thought, well, might be able to offer my little bit to Jesus. So he kind of motions to one of the guys and says, uh, you know, let's, here's something for Jesus. 
And they take it to God, to our Savior. And what does he do with it? He looks at that bag. He, he does exactly that. He lifts it up to God, asks God to bless it. And before man's very eyes, everybody had food to eat. Everybody ate. And Jesus being a man of order, he had people get in small little groups, and they ate so much, they were full. You know how it feels to be full sometimes when you've had a lot of food. They were full. And when man went home that night, his knapsack was full as well. And here he had offered that gift to Jesus. You know what? That's kind of what God does. He gives us a lot more than we deserve sometimes. A lot more than we even ask. And I'll bet if you went home today, you could look around your rooms, your place, and see some things that maybe you could share that you have plenty of. And so next Sunday, all of you are going to be asked to give uh, your extra to God and see what kind of miracles we can do right here at Windsor Church. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for these children. They are such a blessing to us, and we love them all. And Father God, thank you for the, the way that you give us extra all the time. And we are excited about doing miracles right here at Windsor Church. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
those things throughout the week, saying, where is God calling me to act? Where is God calling me to live? A life that is holy, a life that is blessed, a life of gratitude and generosity. Today, as we come together, we are talking about the miracle of sharing and using these passages to think through what that miracle might look like. Uh, this is leading up to next Sunday is Gratitude Sunday as we give dedications to God, as we give dedications to the church, as we think about what it means to dedicate our lives to God in the world around us. And you might have received a letter, and you'll hear more about that from Linda in a little bit throughout this week, or maybe close this week, or maybe tomorrow, depending on how the mail works right now. But nonetheless, we're thinking about where generosity and gratitude are in our lives with the miracle of sharing. Will you be in an attitude of prayer with me? Would that be okay? Let's take a moment. God, as I think of your scriptures, as I think of the people that are here, as I think of the community that has been gathered, as I think of the needs and the ways the church operates, as I think of the many faces that come in and through this building throughout this week who are touched by your blessing, as I think of the many faces that go out into the world and show your will. Let the meditations of my heart, as I've thought of all these things, be pleasing and acceptable to you. May the words of my mouth show your glory and grace as we take this time to meditate together. In your holy name, amen. I want you to think about miracle. The word miracle. When we think of a miracle, what do we think of? Often, I find that we use the word miracle in the world around us to note something that is magical, over the top, right? Something that is a control or the, the inspiration of the divine, but something that seems to be out of the norm to the point where it's not accessible by the average person. We even talked about this last week when we some traditions talk about the saints of the church. They have to count how many miracles that saint had done. To be notified and given the designation of a saint, they had to have done something that seemed to be otherworldly and something that had to be magical in its very essence. But if you look at the definition of that, it means something that's unexpected. It's a, it means something that gives you pause. The very Latin root of the word miracle means to be something that happens that makes you stop and have some awe. Are we willing to stop and have awe? To be able to stop and have awe, we have to have our eyes open, our ears open, our hearts open to where those moments of unexpected glory can be seen in the world around us. Otherwise, we'll never see the miracles. Are we willing to stop and have awe? My worry is that when we make miracles into something that is bigger, larger than life, something that's unobtainable, it's hard to even see those moments when we can stop and have awe, and when they will present us with something that presents God's glory. We stop being able to see it. David Rastan, this humble, kind of short, Scottish monk, talks about giving thanks as a central and pivotal thing in our lives. That the ability to live life with thanksgiving or gratitude leads us to joy in a deep sense. Not a fleeting joy, not a happiness that comes and goes, one that might be shared, and we have to designate, well, was that just my blood sugar out, my blood sugar levels going up, my, my, my ability to have a full belly? He doesn't say it's that type of thing. <coughs> It's something that in the good times and in the bad times will carry us through. That the ability to stop and give thanks and have gratitude
gives us joy in a sense that will carry us through even the worst of times. But here's what he says. Joy is what spurs you on to generosity in the world, and generosity is what changes the world. There is a miracle in sharing, a miracle in being able to see those moments of glory and give thanks to them. There's a miracle in being able to have awe, which produces joy, which produces generosity, and moves it forward. It was a few years ago, uh, maybe a little over 10 years ago, that through the Christian community and through the church community, there was a commercial. It was a Japanese commercial that was floating around. And it just simply started in a rain coming down, man walking down the street. And all of a sudden you saw him help this, uh, what it looked like, a little old lady trying to get her groceries across the street. And you noticed as he helped her across the street, then it followed her, and she went down the street, and she saw somebody in need, and she helped them. And then, wouldn't you know it, that person who was a homeless person on the street, who gave somebody, was given something in need, next thing you know, that person helps somebody else, and helps somebody else, and helps somebody else. And the whole commercial, no words are spoken until the end. And I don't speak Japanese. But the words flash on the screen. And it says something about passing on. To pass on the generosity of what you've experienced. Wouldn't you really believe it? This is a telecommunications company commercial. But there's something in this that it changed. It went from Japan, it went around the world, it was shown in church services, it was shared on social media by Christians, because it, there's something in this moment of generosity that gives us pause. It makes us stop. It makes us have awe. Because our natural inclination is to believe that people are out for themselves in this world. Why would anybody share with another person? And when we see it, when we see somebody serve, when we see somebody step up, when we see somebody give, when we see somebody enter in to generosity, we see something deeper. You see the presence of the divine. You see the glory of God. The scriptures we have today are fantastic. And Judy, I agree with you, one of my favorites, right? It's unique. It's a story that's carried through all four Gospels. It's in every single Gospel, and it is not by happenstance that it is there. And there is a miracle of sharing in the feeding of the 5,000. Let us take a moment to remember where the disciples were, where the people who followed were. This comes right after in Luke that the disciples are given by, by Jesus. He says, go out. I give you all the authority of heaven and earth. Go out and do healings and cast out the evil of this world in my name. Ooh. The disciples are given all the authority of God's divine spirit. And they go out and do so. And wouldn't you know it? They don't just make a ripple in the pond, they make a big splash. So big a splash that the ruler of that day heard and was troubled by what went on. It says Herod, Herod heard and was troubled by what went on in that area. Because the goodwill, the healings, the impact of the evil, of pride, and privilege, was all changed. And we hear that here in Luke, it says, that Luke was says, who are these people and who is this Jesus? Is this like John the Baptist? In Matthew, when you hear this, it means that Herod has taken John the Baptist and through an act of brutality, he beheads him. 
In Luke, we just have a recalling of that moment. But then nonetheless, the followers of John the Baptist are in mourning at the death of somebody that directed them to who God could be in their lives. For when power is challenged by generosity, heads were rolled. And this is where we see them go. Jesus in mourning, and his disciples in mourning, after coming back from being filled with the Spirit, they retreat into the countryside, it says. This is right before the scripture. To be alone, to mourn the death of their friend. The crowds won't have it. They need help. They're angry. They're put aside. They're in their own grief. They're holed up in themselves. And they go to chase after something that will give them a presence of God in their midst. And they seek Jesus. And it says they gather. Now, 5,000 of them, I kind of hate that title. Because you know there was wee little ones running around, children. And there was babies crying having been carried by their moms and their dads for many miles. There was women nursing, and there was women that were helping each other and gathering in community. And yes, there was 5,000 men there too. Estimates could be as much as 15,000 had gathered. In the midst of loss, in the midst of experience, in the midst of seeking something to center them once again. Jesus talked, and Jesus healed, and the disciples healed, and they all gathered to mourn together, and to seek together, and to be together, and the day became long. And the disciples come to Jesus, what are we going to do? We do not have the food to feed these people. A potluck without any food, we can't have that. Jesus says, you feed him. And here's where the miracle happens. Judy, I love how you talk about the young man leaving the house. Here's where the miracle happens. A young man who easily could have gone back home says, but I have this meager offering, this small amount. I have just enough for me for the day and maybe the family that I brought with me. I have a loaf which every day you would bake a loaf of bread for sustenance. This is what I have. And I have some fish. Would it be enough to feed this 5,000 people? These people who have gathered, who have been emotionally drained, who need something more. The miracle is this, not the food. The miracle is that young man stood up and said, I am willing to help. It causes pause. It causes awe. And listen to what happened. We say Jesus feeding the 5,000. Jesus didn't feed the 5,000. Listen. Jesus takes that is off. He lifts it up to God. God blesses it, Jesus takes it, and gives it to the disciples, and the disciples, what do they do? Do they stay within their confines? No, they go out into the crowd, and they disperse it, and from person to person to person, it grows, and it multiplies, and it gets bigger, and it becomes more of a moment of awe, and people take pause because they join in, and here's the miracle that the spirit of the divine expands and it grows the blessing that we have received. We lift it up to God. God blesses it. We take it. We give it out to the world. God blesses it and multiplies it. Everything we need is contained in that. The psalmist says, let my whole being Bless the Lord. 
And never forget all God's good deeds. How God forgives all of our transgressions, heals all of our illnesses and sicknesses, saves our life from a life of feeling like we are in a pit in the muck in the mire, crowns us with faithful love and compassion, and satisfies us with plenty of good things so that our youth is made fresh like the eagle's means. The Lord's work, works of righteousness, righteousness does justice for all who are oppressed. The miracle that we celebrate is not through our own hands. It is not some far-off, magical, abstract thing. It is the ability for the Holy Spirit to whisper into your ear and others' ear, be thankful, have gratitude. And to cultivate those moments, to train the mind, to train the body, that in our thankfulness we may produce joy. And in our joy we may go out into the world and be generous. Generous with the gifts God has given us of talents, of time, of energy. Generous with the things God has given us of money in moments. It's that Holy Spirit that guides our lives. And here's the question that we have. Will we listen? Will we have our ears open, our eyes open, our hearts open to those things that we can be thankful for in our days As we think of a miracle, we see it in each other. We see it in the world. When one person turns from their own needs, their own fast-paced lives, their own clouded minds, and they look and they see that there's somebody else that's in need, and they listen to the movements of the Holy Spirit. This is the miracle of sharing. No matter how we are our offering, we lift it up to God. It's blessed and it's dispersed. And God uses it for good in this world. Amplify and expand. Thank you, Pastor John, for that spirit built message this morning. Our call to confession, merciful God, we know that you want the best for us. It must really disappoint you when we fail to be the kind of devoted followers that you need. You know the needs in this world and the capability that we have of meeting those needs and bringing words of hope and healing through actions of compassion and justice. We pray now in confession, emptying our own souls to be made right in your image. May you join with me our prayer of confession as printed in our bulletin this morning. We confess that acts of thanksgiving are often the farthest from our hearts. We confess that it is easier for us to complain than to give thanks. We confess that we are hesitant in our commitment to you and to ministry.
you, bringing you encouragement, strength, and peace. Rise up and follow the one who offers his life for you. Amen. stewardship committee, and unless you've been asleep for the last hour, you've probably figured out already what our campaign theme is this year. It is the miracle of sharing. Um, you may have received on Friday a letter from us along with a narrative budget describing how we share, uh, split the monies that come in and how those monies are used within the church to, to do what God wishes us to, to help other people, to feed other people, to to love God, to learn together, and to lend a hand. So you should have received the letter. If not, it will probably be in the mail on Monday. Um, and if you don't get one by Tuesday, call the office and we'll get another one, another copy out to you. The theme is the miracle of sharing. And um, it just seems very appropriate that when that little boy, and we always call him a little boy, I'm not sure it says a boy, it might say child. But anyway, that child, Ben, um, shared what little he had and what Jesus was able to do with it. So with what we can share, there is so much that God can do through Windsor, through um, the organizations that we support, through the people that we have on staff. There's so much that we can do to praise God and to serve him. Before you leave today, so that you remember that we talked about the miracle of sharing and the little boy with the loaves and the fishes, you'll each get a gift to, for, from us at the back of the sanctuary, a little bag of goldfish crackers. So you have your own fish to take home with you and to remind yourself that next week's Sunday is our, our gratitude Sunday when we would ask you to return your pledge card so we can figure out what good we can do next year with all that you give to Windsor United Methodist Church. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Oops. My job is also to announce that it's time for our offering. So if the ushers will come forward, um, we'll give thanks to God as every Sunday we have an opportunity to give, God, uh, give back to God and to carry, carry forward with this good work.
this morning for all that you have given us. On my own, what I have to give doesn't amount to much in the light of all you have given to me and in the face of so much need. But put together as a congregation, what we offer you here in love becomes more. Not simply added together, but somehow multiplied in its usefulness, we ask you to bless our gifts. And with the addition of your blessing, just as it was with the loaves and fishes, there is enough for all. Bless these gifts in the hands they may receive them. In your holy and wonderful name. Amen. Please join me in the closing hymn, Amazing Grace, verses 1, 3, and 6, found on 378 in your United Methodist hymn. Thank you. 